Hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk to you guys about David Bernard. Who is David Bernard? He was one of the first American visionaries to carry the gospel message to the Native Americans in New Jersey, New York, and Eastern Pennsylvania in their own language. David's story is full of trials and suffering, yet there is no account of his ever told without revealing his faith in God. The story begins actually on April 20th, 1718, when David Bernard was born to a devout Christian parents in Hayden, Connecticut. By the age of 14, he and his eight siblings had lost both of their parents to illnesses and were left as orphans. In his early years, David was very careful and serious in following God. However, he once said, I had a, I had a very good outside, but my heart was exceedingly sinful. He made a commitment to enter into the ministry even though he was not a believer. When he was 19, he moved to an inherent farm and read through the entire Bible twice in a year. And he began to see that his religion was legalistic and based upon his own efforts. He wrestled with God's sovereignty in his soul and battled deep depression. He strongly fought with the fact that there was nothing he could do in his own strength to commend himself to God. This all changed one evening before sunset when he was radically transformed by a new vision of God's glory. He found unspeakable joy in letting Jesus be king over his life and the whole earth. That night, he determined to live wholly for God so that God's glory could be known. Now this is where the story begins, because two months later, Bernard enrolls into Yale and began to prepare himself for a career in ministry. His first year was rough as he dealt with multiple illnesses, which caused him to go home. In the fall of 1840, he returned to find that the spiritual atmosphere among the students had drastically changed. Several pastor evangelists from the Great Awakening had spoken to the student body and stirred up their passion and love for Christ. This, however, created tension between the conservative staff as some of the faculty had been criticized by students in their enthusiasm for the gospel as being unconverted. In 1741, Jonathan Edwards was invited to preach at Yale in the hopes that he would stand up for the faculty against the charismatic nature of the students. However, Edwards' sermon completely disappointed the staff since he argued that the awakening among the student body was a real spiritual work in spite of their disfavorable views of the staff. This put into action a rule made by the college board that if anyone condemned a staff member as hypocrites or unconverted men, that the, that, that student would be expelled immediately. David Bernard was at the top of his class academically, but was promptly expelled during his third year. He was overheard by one of his professors that his tutor had no more grace than a chair, and that he wondered why the rector did not drop down dead. For finding the students for their evangelical zeal, David greatly regretted his mistake and apologized. He made several attempts to get back to the college, but was still refused to entry. Now discouraged, Bernard had to rethink his plan of becoming a minister. There had been a recent law passed that no one could preach publicly unless they had graduated from Harvard, Yale, or a European university. David began to question his calling to ministry and came to the realization that God must be at work for the glory of his name, even if his best intentions fail. He then accepted that God must have better plans for his life. At this point, the thought of becoming a missionary to Indians was nowhere in his mind. Now, in 1742, David Bernard received his license to preach by Jonathan Dickinson, who later founded Princeton. Now, Dickinson was also a commissioner of society in Scotland for propagating Christian knowledge, a Christian missionary sending organization, pretty much. He tried to reestablish David in Yale, but with no breakthrough. After his unsuccessful attempts, he asked David if he had considered becoming a missionary instead. After praying about it, Bernard was overwhelmed by a strong desire that God wanted to use him in the work of missions to the lost souls of the Indians. Now, on November 25th, 1742 of that same year, Bernard was examined for his fitness for the work and appointed as a missionary to the Native Americans along the Delaware River. His missionary commitment is expressed in these words, quote, Here I am, Lord, send me. Send me to the ends of the earth. Send me to the rough, to the savage pagans of the wilderness. Send me from all that is called comfort on earth. Send me even to death itself, if it be but in thy service and to promote thy kingdom, end quote. In the spring of 1743, the next year, David spent a year of grueling work among the Hostinic Indians, about 20 miles northwest of Stockbridge, Massachusetts. While he preached with a translator, he also started a school for Indian children and tried learning the language so that he could translate some of the Psalms. 
However, he saw very little spiritual transformation among the natives. After one year, the mission board decided to move Bernard to another tribe along the Delaware River in Pennsylvania. There, he fought with grasping the intricate dialects of the native language and suffered from physical awareness, illness, and deep mistrust from the Indians, who had experienced hurt from other white traders. Within that same year, he also traveled to surrounding tribes, but the people were unresponsive to his message. Fighting tuberculosis, cold, lack of sleep, hunger, Bernard fought to continue in his ministry. Among the Indians, he wrote this in his journal, quote, To an eye of reason, everything respecting the conversion of the heathen is as dark as midnight. Yet I cannot but hope in God for the accomplishment of something glorious among them, end quote. Now, in the summer of 1745, David Bernard was relocated to Crosswick, Sung, New Jersey, to preach to the Indians. Within a year, there were 130 Indians that accepted Christ as their Savior, and 77 people were baptized. David was amazed at, at this turn of events, and even more amazed when he saw the fruit of the faith still in action weeks later. Whenever David preached a sermon among the people, the entire tribe would fall down on their faces and weep for hours because they were concerned that they had never known about their great sin towards the Lord before. They discovered fierce longings in their souls for Christ to save them from the misery they felt and feared. The Spirit of God was at work in awakening the natives' hearts and calling them out of their sin and shame while revealing His great love for them. David has several accounts in his journal where he tells a story of the Indians' repentance and love for Christ. In the spring of 1746, David helped the entire Native American Christian community from Crosswicksung move to Can Cranberry to have their own land and village. He stayed with these Indians until he grew too sick with tuberculosis to preach. During autumn, he moved to Elizabethtown to recover at the house of Jonathan Dickerson, who had originally commissioned him to be the missionary. Now, on March 20th, 1747, was the last visit David Bernard made to his Indian friends. He then, after this, he rode to the house of Jonathan Edwards in Northampton, Massachusetts, where he was cared by Jonathan's daughter. A couple months later, he died at the only young age of 29 years old from tuberculosis. Now, this is his legacy. David Bernard was a missionary for four years until the day of his death in 1747. He was sick with tuberculosis for the last eight years of his life and struggled with loneliness, depression, loving the Indians, finding beauty in nature, and staying true to his calling as a missionary instead of reverting back to being a pastor of a church throughout the different seasons. Despite Bernard's suspension from Yale, the university later named a building after him, Bernard Hall at Yale Divinity School, which is the only building on the campus to be named after a student who was expelled. The most impactful outcome of Bernard's mission, ministry is that there are a few Indians, perhaps several hundred, who owe their everlasting life to the direct love and ministry of David Bernard. Who can describe the value of one soul transferred from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of God's dear son? If we live 29 years, or if we live 99 years, would, it not, would not any hardships be worth the saving of one person from the eternal torment of hell, or rather the eternal torment of being separated from God? May our hearts burn with fever prayer for the love of God to be known by every individual on earth. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Consider subscribing and liking. What has God called you to be? Where is God trying to send you?